Shalom and good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcasting to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. Israeli Prime Minister Bimi Netanyahu vows to step up the intensity vis-a-vis -vis the acts of terror emanating from the Hamas-run Palestinian enclave. The Iranian-backed Popular Mobilization Forces released a statement in which it threatened to launch attacks against both Israel and the United States in retaliation for an airstrike earlier this week that killed some 40 of its militants. An American decision to withdraw from the United Nations Human Rights Council draws international criticism, with EU member states referring to the move as bad news for anyone who cares about human rights. Tensions are running high on Israel's border with the Hamas-run Gaza Strip for fear that the volatile situation will once again spark into an all-out conflagration. A day after Palestinian Islamists launched some 45 rockets and mortar shells toward Israel's southern communities, the IDF has reportedly deployed additional Iron Dome batteries to protect Israel's communities. While the Israeli Air Force retaliated by targeting some 25 militant installations, Military sources told TV7 that Hamas is in complete control of the height of the flames, as was the case since the last Gaza war in 2014. The military sources further accused Hamas of manipulating the acts of terrorism, including the use of incendiary kites and balloons, to suit its own purposes. Meanwhile, Hamas signaled to Israel that it has changed the so-called rules of the game, vowing to respond to any Israeli strike with a counter-strike of rockets and mortar shells toward Israel. Residents of southern Israel voiced their frustration at the current situation, accusing the international community and Israel's government in Jerusalem of sitting quiet, while the Islamist organizations in Gaza continue to burn vast swathes of territory by means of incendiary kites and balloons. Terrible night, terrifying night. Uh, alarms, bombs terrifying uh, situation. Our children are scared. We are scared. We are already 85 days of uh, burning all over the area. We are tired, but uh, this is our life. Mixed uh, uh, feelings. On the one hand, we're happy that nothing serious uh, happened, no damages, no serious damage and no injuries. On the other hand, it's frustrating to live in an area that again and again uh, is being bombarded by, the, by our neighbors and the government and uh, the world sits quiet and doesn't really do anything about it. In response to the growing Israeli frustration, Prime Minister Bimi Netanyahu vowed to step up the intensity vis-à-vis -vis the acts of terror emanating from the Palestinian enclave, yet stopping short from going into details. אינני מתכוון לפרט את המהלכים שאנחנו מתכננים מול עזה. העוצמה תגבר ככל שידרש. אנחנו ערוכים לכל תרחיש. ומוטב שאויבינו יבינו זאת, ועכשיו. During Netanyahu's address to the IDF officers' course graduation ceremony, the Israeli leader took the opportunity to underscore the source of Israel's strength, aimed at ensuring the future of its people in its ancestral homeland. לפני 70 שנה, חידשנו את קיומנו הריבוני בארצנו. מעם נרדף ופצוע, הפכנו לעם רב כוח, סקוף קומה. החיבור לשרשרת הדורות נוסח בנו את העוז להמשיך להיאבק להבטחת נצח ישראל. With regard to challenges faced on Israel's northern frontier, the Israeli Prime Minister reiterated Jerusalem's position, in which Israel will use all the tools at its disposal to thwart Iran's military entrenchment in Syria. <laughs> כדי למנוע את התבססות הצבאית של כוחות איראן וגרועותיה שם. לא ניתן למי שקורא להשמדתנו 
להפוך את סוריה לבסיס תקיפה נגד ישראל. אגרוף הפלדה של צה"ל הולם ויהלום בעוצמה בכל מי שחותר לפגוע בנו. The comments on Israel's active policy to thwart Iran's entrenchment in Syria came just several days after a U.S. official alleged that it was Israel that had conducted an aerial assault targeting positions of Iraqi factions along Syria's eastern border region, referring to the Iraqi Popular Mobilization Forces, a Shiite militia alliance that operates under the directives of the Quds Force, the elite arm of Iran's Revolutionary Guards. In response to the attack, which the U.S. rejected responsibility for and Israel refused to confirm or deny its involvement, the Iraqi mobilization force released a statement in which it threatened to launch attacks against both Israel and the United States. The statement read, this terrible crime will reopen the confrontation with the Zionist entity and the American project, vowing that the Shiite militias will not let the crime of targeting their fighters pass unnoticed, and once they reveal who was behind the attack, the Shiite militias will mobilize to respond with force. Now to Iran, where the chief of the Islamic Republic's Revolutionary Guards rejected a plea from Iranian activists to agree to negotiate with the United States on resolving differences, accusing those that demand negotiations of siding with the United States, the enemy of the Iranian people. General Muhammad Ali Jafari was quoted by the ISNA news agency as warning that striking an understanding with the United States means the death of the Islamic Republic. Iranian government spokesman Muhammad Bagir Nabakht echoed Jafari's remarks, saying there is no foundation or logic to talk to such a person as Trump, while asserting that public opinion in Iran would not welcome that either. That said, while most voices in Tehran reject any concessions to the Trump administration, an article published this morning by a state-owned newspaper in Tehran, Iran's top diplomat Muhammad Javad Zarif announced a list of 15 demands for improving relations with the United States, that in response to a similar list of demands made by Washington last month. Among the list of demands, Foreign Minister Zarif demanded an immediate U.S. return to the multinational nuclear agreement, an immediate American intervention to stop the Saudi-led coalition from advancing against Iranian-backed Houthi rebels in Yemen, and to drop Washington's opposition to a nuclear disarmament of Israel. The article came in response to demands laid out in May by Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, who called for a wholesale change in Iran's military and regional policies, threatening the Islamic Republic with the strongest sanctions in history if it would refuse. Now to Geneva, where the American decision to withdraw from the United Nations Human Rights Council drew international criticism, with EU member states referring to the move as bad news for anyone who cares about human rights. Among the reasons for the U.S. decision, Ambassador Nikki Haley underlined the Council's failure to conduct major, dramatic and systematic changes demanded by the United States, further accusing the Council of hypocritical and self-serving over what it called the Council's chronic bias against Israel. Bulgaria's ambassador to the Council stressed on behalf of the European Union that it shared Washington's declared objective of making the international human rights body more efficient and to improve its working methods. We share the objective to make the Human Rights Council more efficient and to improve its working methods. Therefore, remain strongly engaged in the ongoing efficiency efforts led by the Human Rights Council president. The EU is and will continue to be a staunch supporter of multilateralism and the wider UN system. U.S. officials noted in response, however, that while like-minded countries urged the United States to remain in the Council, they were unwilling to confront the unjust status quo of obsessively condemning Israel unless it was done behind closed doors. Thank you for watching us. Due to Midsummer Day, TV7 Israel News won't broadcast tomorrow. So from me and the team here in Jerusalem, have a Shabbat Shalom and Erev Tov. Keep praying for the peace of Israel and the peace of Jerusalem. I'm Jonathan Hassan and we will see you again on Monday at the same time.